welcome to another whiteboarding video. My name is Dominic, and I'm a consultant with Red Hat Consulting. And hey, my name is Brandon Plinus, and I'm a consultant out of the Red Hat Automation Practice. Today, we're going to talk about maintaining infrastructure's code using Ansible. So Brandon, I'm a, I know that Ansible is a powerful tool for provisioning large numbers of servers and VMs in a fast and standard way. But what if my servers are based off of different operating systems or different images? Can Ansible still guarantee that the playbooks work as they're supposed to? Yeah, Ansible can manage all types of operating systems, from virtual to bare metal, even Windows. With proper grouping and variables in place, Ansible can seamlessly target all of these nodes. So I'm aware of grouping in an inventory file to say, like these sets of nodes are supposed to be hosting my web applications, for example. But how would we use grouping to single out the differences in our nodes. So as you may know, Ansible relies on an existing Python interpreter to issue commands to a remote server. A lot, although standard servers have this at user bin Python, some older oper operating systems, notably Solaris, have this at a different location. We can specify this using the Ansible Python interpreter variable. OK, so with the Ansible Python interpreter variable, we can say where Python exists on our nodes. So I see this uh, Ansible sudo exe. What's that one for? Ansible by default connects to an operating system and runs a command as the user that ran it. But there are some times that you want to run a command on the operating system as a different user, say the root user. So you need to specify on the operating system the location of the sudo on that operating system. Can you tell me how the, uh, the groups in this in inventory file work? Yeah, sure. So let's take a look at this inventory file behind us. We have our top level inventory, Ansible Managed. This would be the in inventory group that we would target with the playbook. And it would contain all of the other nodes in this inventory file. Ansible Managed has three children uh, or subgroup or composite inventory groups that fall beneath it. And then each of these composite or subgroups has a node in it. Notice at the bottom that we have also these variables here that correspond to our subgroups. OK, great. So what you're saying is if I run my playbook against Ansible Managed, then it doesn't matter that you know, the nodes inside the alternate pseudo group have a varying location. It'll just work. Yeah, exactly. It's also important to note that if you have your inventory file laid out this way, that you can target these subgroups independently. OK, great. Now, what would it mean if I wanted to add another node to my fleet of servers? Sure. So if it follows one of these existing implementations, you can just simply add the node to the subgroup. But if it has a different implementation, say a different Ansible Python interpreter, or a different pseudo location, it probably makes sense to add a new inventory group. Sometimes there are one-off implementations. In this case, you could just add it as a one line underneath Ansible Managed. What if instead of one server, I'm trying to add hundreds? How would that work? Yeah, sure. At the enterprise level, it's not very common to have a static inventory file with developers and system administrators fighting over it. In this case, we'd use a dynamic inventory script, which pulls from uh, cloud providers like Rev, Satellite, Cloud Forms, or public clouds like AWS, Google Compute, or Azure. And all of these concepts remain the same, but it allows you to target dynamically provisioned nodes. So Brandon, if I have more questions about Ansible or managing my inventory file, where should I turn? So you can start by opening up a conversation with your Red Hat account executive, or you can go to redhat.com services to find more about our service offerings.